Howdy friends, Kelly Blue Book has a long-term Jeep Gladiator Rubicon and we figured as long as you've got this here, maybe we'll do a little bit of a walk around. With that in mind, by the way, I should point out this is a 2020 model and there is a 2021 model because that's the year we're in, which is basically the same thing. They haven't made major updates. So this is still a pretty good representation of what you'd find if you went to your nearest Jeep dealer and wanted to buy a Rubicon. Let's start up front. So with these guys, this has the LED lighting package and at the launch of the vehicle, what they pointed out is that this shape was inspired by, do you remember Star Wars and Luke Skywalker had the little uh, binocular thing? This is actually inspired by that which I think is kind of cool. So we've got that LED lighting package up front here. This being the Rubicon red tow hooks, because you can't be rugged and outdoorsy without red tow hooks. Of course, the seven slot grill. And this is kind of cool. We've got the camera up here. And if you get real close, you can see there's a little washer nozzle. So what's fun, if you want to impress your friends off road, is um, pull up the front camera and then it just goes it's, a, it's kind of a nice little bit of flair if you want to impress people. So the bumper here, this is a winch capable bumper. Um, we don't have a winch, which shows that we're total posers and we're not really off-roading this thing in the hardcore way that we, we ought to. But if you wanted to, you could add a winch to this. And then if you get down here below, big skid plates. And uh, I can vouch for the fact that even though there's not a winch, my uh, collaborator at KBB, Lynn Woodward, has done some gnarly off-roading, as indicated by the fact that uh, when we go to the side, I'll point out a spot that had to be repaired because Lynn got slightly too gnarly. That's not a criticism, Lynn. I'm just pointing out that uh, you know, you're know you living your best gladiator life. Let's move over here to the side. Oh, oh, before we do that, we should talk about the engine. So we got the 3.6 liter Pentastar V6 under here, and it's really, really easy to get to. So easy that um, if you wanted to steal the engine out of a Gladiator, this is all you'd have to do. One hinge here or one latch here, another here, <laughs> voila. I say voila as I'm struggling to find the release. <laughs> this happens every single time I do it. There we go. That got her. There's the 3.6 liter. I'm going to have my good friend Mike Danger put these stats on screen. You know what's funny is that, I mean, that, that's almost 300 horsepower. It should be plenty of um, plenty of motivation, but uh, I can attest to the fact that driving in the mountains, it's just enough. Um, it's not like wildly overpowered, but that's what that looks like. Let's close it up. I'm also going to point out too, one thing um, that the Jeep Wrangler has struggled with is that people will sometimes pop open the, uh, the hood and then steal the uh, headlights. And that's one of the concerns with having the LED lights, I'm still doing that struggling thing there, is that they'll just pop it up and then rip these guys out. You actually just pull this back. Don't steal headlights out of Jeeps, please. That's uh, one little concern with our Gladiators that's just so easy to pop this open that um, we wouldn't want these stolen. Our previous Wrangler long-termer, it is exactly what happened. Lynn came out to find her Wrangler, um, had his eyes removed. No good. Moving to the side of the Gladiator, I mean, the big things obviously, Rubicon. So you can let everybody know that you're the baddest Gladiator owner in town unless there's somebody else with a Rubicon. 33 inch tires, and you ever go to a car wash and they want to do the tire dressing? I just took to, this, to the car wash and they did that. So now there's all this shiny crap on the outside of my tire. I hate that, I should have been clear that I don't want that. 17 inch wheels, and if you peek behind the tire, you can get in there, Mike Danger. That's a uh, Fox Racing suspension, um, the, the dampers there. That lets you know that this is a uh, Rubicon made for gnarly off-roading. Oh, and if that wasn't clear enough, Check this out, we've got the trail rated badge. I like the fact that it's got the inset red lettering. What I don't like is that there's only a badge on this side. If you go over, go, go make, make a field trip over there, Mike. Uh, no badge on the passenger side. Those are the people that you wanna have confident that this thing can go on a trail. So I wish they did it on both sides, but nonetheless, I really do like the, the red lettering motif here too with the, uh, the Jeep and you have the little red um, outline. That looks pretty cool. Oh, and then of course on the side, we've got the doors that you can remove. It's just two bolts right here. And then on the inside, there's um, a little plastic dealy bob. I'm sure that's not the technical term. And then you can uh, use this little um, quick release, which <laughs> I'm trying to do and it's not working. There we go. Is that gonna get it? The name of this uh, walk around should be Watch Mike a Struggle. But yeah, no, there we go. It's a fairly quick release, and then you just pop this right off. 
If I was somewhat more motivated, I would remove the doors. But yeah, literally two bolts. And what's really cool is it has uneven pins. So if they were the exact same length, you'd have to line them both up simultaneously. But one pin is longer than the other. So you get one aligned and then get the other. Really easy to take on and off. And there's a tool kit to do that. In fact, let me just pull that out right here. This is what the tool kit looks like. It comes with every Jeep. Allen wrench falling down. But yeah, you can uh, take parts on and off. One thing I didn't point out in the hood is that right up front here, do you know what these are for, Mike? Uh, helicopter drop-in. <laughs> helicopter drop-in, that's a good guess. No, that's for the, uh, the windshield. You can actually fold the windshield down. It's four bolts, and these keep the uh, windshield from banging on the hood. So if you're doing like some really serious off-roading and you just want that true bug in your teeth kind of vibe, you can do that, literally four bolts and just slides right on down. All right, let me uh, put that back in place. Let's move to the bed, shall we? This is the bed of the Jeep Gladiator. And I actually have a lot of experience using this bed. Um, we moved from the city to the mountains. And so we made multiple trips up the hill using this much space. One complaint versus like some of the other uh, pickup trucks on the market is that it's not a huge amount of space but it's workable if you're um, trying to load up with like U-Haul boxes and that kind of thing. There's not a lot of technology back here. I will note it's a damp tailgate, which I do like. Um, there's no like super easy, you know, flip out step or anything, but it's workable, especially you got this little bar right here. You can use that to uh, step up on. Also being the Rubicon, it sits up a little bit higher. So if my wife, who's much shorter than I, wanted to put something over the side of the bed, it'd be a bit of a reach. Can I tell you a story? So when we got this thing, it had a, a metal tonneau cover. Um, as you can see, there's like a rail right here and um, it latched down here. So we had to take this thing in for some repairs. And then when we got it back, I got on the freeway. I was doing like uh, freeway speeds and then I heard a sound and in my rear view mirror, I saw the tonneau cover fly off. So I'm not blaming anybody, but at some point the tonneau cover was not attached and then it flew off on the freeway didn't hurt anybody, but it was lost to the freeway gods. So we did previously have that metal tonneau cover, and I can verify that it really, really helped out when going, uh, you know, just like traveling with the family. You can put all the luggage in the back here, and it's uh, safe and secure, which is really nice. We also have the spray-in bed liner, so it's pretty resilient. You can, um, like, drag things across here, and it's not going to, you know, um, make a, a big scrape and then start rusting or anything like that. And then over here, we've got our power outlet which is nice. So you can, um, personally, I always go with the margarita machine. Um, you might choose something manlier or more work related, but yeah, I'd probably go margarita machine. Not while driving though. This is sort of a campsite thing. And then this light here, um, this is an LED light. It gets really, really um, bright at night. So where we live, there's not much nighttime illumination. So if you want to get things in and out of the bed at night, that illumination is really great. Oh, and I promised to show you where there was previously some damage um, while uh, off-roading. So this little spot right here, our car has the uh, rock rails and there was a little spot right here that got a dent from a rock and um, it was repaired and it looks uh, pretty darn great now. So you can't tell, but, um, but uh, this is just <laughs> non-visible proof that we actually did take the thing off-roading, bad example. And you know what, while we're here, let's talk about the soft top real quick. Um, putting the top back is really, really convenient. So if you come in here, Literally two latches. You just pull this down, pull this down, and then flip it up. Now it's a little bit awkward because you kind of have to stand up here and then go back. It's got like an intermediate point where it'll hold, and then you just push it back the rest of the way. What do you guys think? Some people have complained about the fact that the top just sort of like sits on here. Um, yeah, go back a little bit. Let's see. What do you think? Does this, does this look good? I'm okay with it because when you're driving, all you feel is wind. You're not looking at that. But I've heard some people complain online that they don't like how it just sort of bunches up there. I've also, um, you know what I've never done? I've been driving this thing for a while. I've never taken out the back window. Should we try? Should we take out the back window? Yeah, let's go for it. The way Jeep suggests is you pull these little parts out first. You just have these um, little um, plastic nodules that just sort of slide into these channels. So, so far this seems pretty easy. I like the fact that it's easy for quick removal. Although as I'm doing this, I'm realizing how easy it is to um, break into this thing. <laughs> Let's see, we'll get the bottom one out. Doot, doot, doot. And then we just slide it laterally. 
That was really, really simple. Oh, and then same thing with the, um, the sides here too. So you've got these little uh, channels, you just pull them out. That came out suspiciously easy. <laughs> like I'm shocked that hasn't come out just driving on the freeway or something. It's a really neat system when they introduced the new Wrangler and uh, how easy this top was. Uh, I was kind of shocked. My mom used to have a Wrangler when I was a kid and I had to install a soft top on it. And it was like zippers and clasps and Velcro and everything. And this makes uh, all of that stuff seem really stupid. So uh, that's a little bit more open air. Sure. Moving inside, we've got leather seats. Um, just reminding you that it is indeed the Rubicon. I found these seats pretty comfortable for some long drives. Uh, you know, it, it feels a little bit rudimentary. You've got this little strap down here, which adjusts seat angle. It's always fun when you get somebody who's never been in a Jeep before, a Wrangler or a Rubicon, to figure out how to do the seat angle. And then you've got a knob down here. You've got one over on your side too, Mike Danger, that you can use for, uh, or maybe you don't. Do you not? You don't! <laughs> no lumbar support for you on the passenger side. But over here, there's a uh, knob that's kind of not where you would expect it that you can use to adjust the uh, lumbar support. In fact, you can actually see it kind of move in and out a little bit. So I always like that at maximum lumbar because I'm one of those guys. The aesthetic of the interior, I think, looks pretty good. This um, red element here feels very classic Jeep, which I really like. We have the 8.4 inch Uconnect infotainment system, which I've really gotten used to over time. Um, pretty good Im Im implementation of uh, Apple CarPlay. So this all works great. This region right here, there's a lot of buttons, but again, with experience, um, it, it's all pretty manageable. And then you've got your uh, window switches here. And of course they're inboard because the doors come off. It's a pretty good place to put them. Um, here you can connect your phone, You've got a USB-C and a USB-A and old school auxiliary input. I don't know who's still using those, but uh, God bless you if you are. And then down here, we've got the cool stuff. We've got the auxiliary switches, which you can use to um, add aftermarket features. If you want to put on some aftermarket lights or uh, whatever you want, you have a ton of flexibility to uh, set those up as you want. And then over here, here's the good stuff. This is the um, <laughs> lock and differential. So uh, if you're doing some of that gnarly off-roading, you can do the rear or you can do the front and the rear. Here's your off-road plus mode. And then you can actually uh, disconnect the sway bars as well for even greater wheel articulation. So uh, all of this stuff, uh, we'll call that the fun zone. That's where the action happens. And then of course, here's your um, uh, four wheel drive selector, four high, neutral, and four low. And um, manual selection for the, uh, the transmission here, which uh, living up in the mountains, I actually make pretty good use of um, every once in a while. You know, when you're coming down the hill, you don't want to burn out your brakes. Uh, it's nice to be able to pop down a gear or two. And then this one does have dynamic cruise control, which you can activate over here. It doesn't have lane keeping assist, but you can set the uh, dynamic cruise control, which is kind of nice. Oh, and then in here, so, You've got the top level where you can put your tools, and then if you flip it up, there's uh, more crap. Lynn, I believe this is your Land Rover hat. Uh, I have claimed it. Come and get it if you'd like it. No, it's mine now, sorry. And then a couple of cup holders. And one little detail I think is really nice too is that in between the cup holders here, they've created a little phone nook that you can use to uh, keep your phone nice and cozy right there. Moving to the back seat. Item one, I can sit behind myself just fine. There's this, um, I always mispronounce it, is it Mole? There's a, a strap system, so you can um, use uh, a strap accessories here, whatever that might be, first aid kit, I don't know, I'm honestly not sure. What I really like back here though, is that you've got vents. Um, you know, I have a five-year-old daughter, so it's great that um, you've got vents that you can uh, direct cold or hot air, since we live in some, uh, something of a challenging climate, that's a nice thing. And then a couple, of course, a couple of cup holders back here too. And in terms of space, you know, the uh, rear seats are a little bit more vertical than I would prefer, but decent knee clearance. So, yeah, it's not a bad place. And um, the top is obviously open right now, but uh, plenty of headroom as well. Underneath the seats, if you flip them up, we got some uh, storage space here. So, we'll open this up right here. And you can actually pull these out so you can put a longer item. In fact, if you open all of this up and you pull these out, does that pop out too? Should have checked this beforehand, but there's a possibility I'm going to break this. If I oh, good. Yeah, so you can put like, uh, I'll just say a fishing pole back here or whatever you might want to do for your sportsman lifestyle, but you can put that under here and it's lockable. So it's really great to have that lockable storage space. And then there's your uh, toolkit there for 
uh, changing tires, which if you're living your best Jeep life, you might just have to. Oh no, I slashed you while doing some early off-roading. You know how we do, Jeep life. And that's a quick look at our 2020 Jeep Gladiator Rubicon. As far as pricing is concerned, you can get a Gladiator for about 34 grand. As equipped, brace yourself, our Rubicon with all of the options is about $62,400. Pausing so you can breathe. Yeah, it's a lot of money, but you know, blue book life. If you're curious about more uh, you know, Gladiator talk, you can always check us out over on Instagram. Obviously, please subscribe on YouTube if you'd like to see more Kaylee Blue Book videos, which I said in a very weird way there. And if you're buying or selling a car, KBB.com is a great place to go. Good walk around, everybody. High fives. Bye.